everyone. I'm Nyla Bolas, CEO of the National Early Childhood Organization Jumpstart. And I'm here today with two very special people to announce the 15th Read for the Record campaign. Yay! <laughs> Every year, Jumpstart's Read for the Record sparks a global intergenerational movement through reading where we build awareness about the critical importance of early literacy and the impact of access to high quality children's books. Last year, we read with over 2 million of you. And this year on October 29th, so put that in your calendar, we hope to read with even more. And so today we're gonna to make a special announcement and I am thrilled to be joined by two amazing advocates for children, award-winning author Meg Medina and her friend, actress and writer, Sonia Manzano, who many of you know as Maria from Sesame Street. So welcome Meg and Sonia. Thank you, nice to be here. <laughs> Meg, would you like to do the honors? Yes! <laughs> so, it is my honor to announce that my forthcoming book, Evelyn Del Rey is Moving Away, has been selected as Jumpstart's Read for the Record 2020 campaign book. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations! Thank you. It was such a beautiful surprise. Congratulations, Meg. It's a beautiful book. I loved reading it. It was like watching a movie. Mm. Sonia Sanchez's uh, uh, illustrations had so much movement in, in them. I loved, it. As, as people will know soon, it's a wonderful story of friendship of two little girls. And there's a wonderful scene in it where they're spinning around, holding hands, using centrifugal force to fall down. I mean, it's a game that I played so much as a kid. I love when, kid, when books are very specific like that. And uh, I, I love the girl friendship story. Can you tell us more about that and why you wrote that? Yes, I would. And I used to play that game too. <laughs> I used to love to spin until I was positively sick. <laughs> until I had to fall on the floor. Um, so when I was first thinking about this book, I was thinking about my first friend. Mm. Um, not necessarily my best friend over the course of life, but the very first friend that I remember having. And in my life in Queens, it was a girl named Evelyn Guzman. Um, Evelyn lived a couple of blocks from me. She was a Cuban girl also. Um, our, both our families had um, come as immigrants from Cuba in the early 60s. And our mothers could talk to each other, which was such a huge deal. Sure. It made it easier to have a friendship and for our families just to share information. And I loved Evelyn. I loved the cakes her mother made us and mm -hmm. the fact that her aunt was a hairdresser and she would let us play with dippity do and all of these little things that she would bring. She was terrific. So like there are things in, that happen in your childhood, small things that you never forget that somehow mark your childhood. And so I always wanted to write this story sort of honoring that feeling of friendship. And so I wrote about Ev Evelyn Del Rey, not Evelyn Guzman, but in this story, um, you know, it's friends on the last day um, before Evelyn is moving to a new place. So it's a story about how we sometimes lose friends also. Sometimes we lose them because they move or they go to another class. Sometimes we move them because we grow up and we have like different interests. All of those things happen. We just lose touch and we don't really know why. But I still think that it's possible to keep friends long-term as well, to hold them in your heart in some way. You know, I, I've held Evelyn in my heart all these years. Mm. And so I think just now with all the separations and all of the ways that we're being asked to you know distance ourselves from our friends you know i i feel really lucky that this book is coming out now oh, to yes. celebrate the bonds between people yes absolutely you know i may i thought it's interesting you say my first friend not my best friend but my first friend mm -hmm. and that's important because that's when you really feel a separate a, a connection with someone that's not your family yes. but, but someone outside of your family that you that you care about. I think that that's very important. I thought about my best first friend, Mary Mubel, and, and connecting. 
And, and uh, you know, now we're connecting a lot. I, uh, through the internet, I saw you on television and felt I had to connect with you because I saw you talk about a relative. I connect with my Sesame Street friends friends all the time, once a week, as a matter of fact. So, so, so these are skills we're gonna take into the future. How are you connecting with people these days? Um, well, just probably just like you, um, I, I would give money to be on that Sesame Street. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Zoom chalk, that would, I just keep, my mind is going wild just thinking about what that would be. But um, I'm doing the same thing. FaceTime and texts, and we're sending jokes to each other. Um, my friends at Hamlin, my the, my fellow faculty members in the writing program there where, where I teach, we did a Zoom yoga class together, which was ridiculous. So just things like that, small ways that um, we're reminded that, you know, our lives got so busy. Mm -hmm. um, and and it packed with so many things with with teams with sports with activities with jobs with all kinds of things but now has it's become a time to really remember that it's the people that matter the most to us these small moments of connection um and and you and i had one like i recently you know my aunt is in a nursing facility at a really scary wow. time right and um you were so kind. You you sent me an email, just a few lines, to ask how my aunt was, to wish me well, and to tell me you were thinking about me. And that meant the world to me um, because we do face hard things, but we don't have to face them by ourselves. People love us. People hold us in their hearts. And and um, I wanted to to celebrate that in the book too. Yeah, and you certainly do. I don't want to give a like. There's a spoiler alert, but at the end, it's a it's a it's a nice uh, uh, ending, and uh, where you feel that there there is some connection between between these two girls. I also liked a lot, Meg, the uh, that there was Spanish interspersed within the English. Yeah, that's one thing, uh, and then uh, there's also a Spanish version of the book. But but what you said about your friend's mother spoke Spanish that that was all of a sudden, oh, a connection. Well, no matter what level you spoke it at. Right, but. right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, some of us speak Spanish really well. Some of us don't speak it at all, or we understand it, we can't speak it. We're in families where our grandmothers, let's say, don't speak English, we don't speak, uh -huh. like, there's all of these different ways of, of connecting around language. But yeah, I mean, with, with this book, um, one of the most gratifying things is is that there is a Spanish edition coming. Uh, it's Evelyn del Rey Se Muda, and it uh, was translated by Teresa Mlauer, who if, recently passed, unfortunately, but Teresa was just an icon in translation and advocacy for books that um, represent Latino children and Latino families. Um, she was just amazing. And the beautiful part of her translation journey with this book, it was the last book that she translated before her death. And she said to me that she, it brought to mind for her, her own friendship, her best friend in Cuba, mm -hmm. they had had a falling out when um, Teresa left Cuba because of the political situation at the time. Mm -hmm. All those years later, years and years and years later, you know, they reconnected um, and Teresa by that time was ill and her friend stepped forward to be her caretaker here in this oh. country for a, a little while. And so that feels also like a celebration of language, a celebration of friendship. I, I love that Teresa's energy and spirit is also part of the Spanish translation. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's been a joy. I can't wait for the book to come out in the fall. I can't, I can't wait to read it in Spanish. I did. I haven't yet. I've only read it in English, but um, you know, there's so many different ways. You know, there's Puerto Rican Spanish and there's Cuban yeah. Spanish and there's New Yorican Spanish and there's uh, so. Uh, I love all of it. I love all of it. I love reading books where how we really sound in our families is there. Yeah, with slang, with the mistaken words, with the Spanglish, mm -hmm. like all of it, because that is how we sound. That yeah. Is how we talk. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Well, we are so thrilled to have this book. And you know, each year Jumpstart receives literally dozens of submissions for the annual campaign book. We're looking for books that will foster language, exactly as you're talking about now, and social emotional development, books that will honor diversity, that will have a strong narrative. Of course, books that appeal to young children, that's critically important. And as you've been saying, these themes of lasting friendship and encountering change that are lifted up so beautifully in this book makes it feel just especially meaningful for these times. So we're super excited about the special edition of the book in English and in Spanish. And the special edition includes reading tips and activity guides for adults. Um, it's gonna be av available in paperback, so it will be widely accessible. So I wanna thank you both, Meg and Sonia, so much for being part of today's announcement. We can't wait for October 29th, read for the record to read Evelyn Del Rey is moving away. And this campaign is brought to everybody in partnership with our wonderful exclusive presenting sponsor, TJX Companies. And I hope everyone will go to readfortherecord.org to register, register to read and pre-order your book today. Thank you again so much, Meg and Sonia. Look forward to seeing you soon. Very good. Bye everyone. Bye, Sonia.